The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times. Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began his accounting, a debtor was brought in before him who owed a huge amount, since he had no way of paying it back. His master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all of his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave the entire debt. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized one of his fellow servants and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said, You wicked servant, I forgave your entire debt because you begged with me. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant, as I had pity on you. Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I'm going to begin with a story that I know on one occasion I used, but I do not believe it was ever at a Sunday Mass here at St. Greg's, so hopefully my memory is not uh, that uh, poor yet, and I'm remembering correctly. And uh, the story has certainly uh, been out there a little bit, so maybe you've heard it in other circles. And the story is this. Uh, There was a particular bank, a branch of a particular bank, and People who worked at the branch received word that the uh, president of the bank was going to come and pay a visit to the branch. And everyone, of course, was uh, pleased over that and getting ready. And and one of the tellers, an older gentleman, one of the tellers uh, kept telling everyone else that, that he and the president were very good friends. And, of course, nobody really believed him. And the, uh, the day came for the president of the bank to visit. He came, and certainly going person to person, meeting all of the employees. And, and lo and behold, when this particular teller stepped forward, it, it was very obvious, by the way, that the two greeted one another and stood at great length talking, that, that they really did, in fact, know each other. And uh, after the visit was over, You know, the other tellers, other employees of the branch came to this particular teller and said, you know, know, we're very sorry that we we didn't believe you. It's obvious that uh, that the two of you are really friends. So, but, you know, can you tell us how is it that the two of you are friends? You know, he's he's the president of the bank and and you're a teller here at this branch. How, How do you know one another so well? And the man looked at them and so the answer is very, ser- uh, very simple. He said, he and I started here 
the very same day, many years ago. Said, and the, uh, the difference is this, uh, when the president came that first day, he came to work for the bank, and I came to work for $5 an hour. Uh, story with some meaning, two very different ways to approach you know, if it be our employment, a real way of life. You know, are we really invested in that mission, whatever it may be, or is there some self-seeking purpose? And a real simple question as we celebrate this Sunday is, uh, who is it that you work for? And I don't mean the name on the paycheck, you know. Who is it that you work for? Who is it that you belong to? Who do you belong to? It's a very important question. These were given in the readings two very different directions to go. St. Paul in the letter to the Romans, the second reading, reminds us very clearly that we belong to Christ Jesus. We belong to Christ Jesus. And he ultimately purchased us, as we know, with, with his blood on the cross. We're reminded very clearly in that reading none of us lives for oneself, None of us dies for oneself. While we live, we live for the Lord. And when we, we die, we die for the Lord. So that whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. So the simple question, who is it that you really belong to? Do you really belong to the Lord? Or has someone or something else crept in to become more important. First reading from the book of Sirach, a beautiful reading, is rather clear and the, the gospel, the story told, very clear that there are two different paths to follow. Uh, those who choose to belong to God follow the path of mercy and forgiveness. It's a very central part of their heart. So for any of us who belong to Christ, mercy, forgiveness, must be the very central part of our heart, our way of living. The gospel makes it very clear that uh, those who belong to Christ have to forgive. Now under uh, Jewish law, Jewish law required somebody to be forgiven three times. If, if someone wronged me, I had to forgive them. And if they did the same thing again, I had to forgive them again. And if they did it a third time under the law, I had to forgive them yet again. Fourth time, watch out, you know, but under the law three times. So, you know, you have to wonder why is St. Peter saying, should I forgive seven times? You know, I don't know if he was in a generous mood and just doubled the number, added one more, you know, a half a baker's dozen or something, I don't know. Uh, or is there a deeper meaning? Of course, there's a deeper meaning because that, that number seven in Scripture is generally always associated with mercy and forgiveness. And that number seven in the Scripture always means always. That's what it means. So really what, what the person who belongs to Christ, you, myself, if we state that we belong to Christ, we, we must have mercy and forgiveness in our heart and and when is it that we have mercy and forgiveness? Always. That is what is required of us. So if we do not belong to God, if we reside somewhere else, if we reside in some earthly thing, some secular thing, what do we hear in the scripture today? Well, Sirach gives us a very clear description. He said, uh, you're going to live in wrath, anger, and vengeance. If you don't belong to God... That's where you live, wrath, vengeance, and anger. I won't ask for a show of hands, but uh, how many of you at least know someone who is angry either at you or someone else for years you don't speak and you don't even remember why? I have had so many funerals where people in the family will not even speak to one another, and they don't know why. I remember one funeral I had when I was at St. Amelia's, it's over 20 years ago, and perhaps I've told you the story, I'm not sure, but uh, 
It was a funeral that you don't really like to have because there was no wake. Wake is often the time you get to know the family better. And uh, by dinner time the night before the funeral, I, I knew I had a problem because uh, I had received not one, not two, not three, but four or maybe five completely different sets of arrangements for the Mass the next day. All different readings, all different readers, all different music. And, and I said, well, there's a problem here. Well, one of the children, if I remember right, there were about eight or nine children in the family, and uh, one of them belonged to the parish, so I called and I said, you know, what's going on? <laughs> And she said, oh, we, we hate one another. I said, uh, that's why there isn't a wake. We don't know what would have happened if we were in the room together. And uh, I said, well, tomorrow we'll follow your set of plans because I see you every Sunday, you know. And uh, we'll see where it goes. But I, I remember finishing the homily. In those days, I used to preach down there on the floor. And, and I was preaching the homily it was the father who had died, and um, finished the homily. I turned around to come up, back up the steps, and I was about halfway. And I turned around, and I, I went back down, and I put my hand on the casket. And I said, um, you know, your father was a good man. I knew him. And um, he's got to be turning over in his grave before you're taking him there today as he sees how you behaved. And he said, I know you don't get along. I know you don't like one another. I know you won't speak to one another. And I said, there's something called the sign of peace before communion. If you're coming in communion line, I suggest you use it. I was sweating bullets. <laughs> and we got to the part of the mass of the sign of peace. And, and what a beautiful, beautiful moment. Had to have gone on for 15, 20 minutes as they got out of their benches and talked to one another and reconciled. How often do we live in that wrath, that anger, that vengeance? Maybe we, we don't even know why anymore. We just know we don't get along. That doesn't speak of God. If you, if you belong to God, it's very clear that we have to be of mercy, we must be of forgiveness, and not revenge, anger, and wrath. One of the reasons we should live in God is one day we hope to be eternal with God. And how is it that God will judge us? I'm not absolutely certain. But I do believe, maybe, one way God is going to judge us all is that he is going to assume our mind, our ability to forgive or not, our prejudices, and he's going to hold us accountable to our own standard. And if we've been merciful and forgiving and generous in doing so with one another, things will go pretty well. But if we've been cheap, watch out. Because Sirach today tells us very clearly the vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. In a little while, we'll pray the Our Father. Hopefully, we do that multiple times a day. And what is the very heart of that prayer? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who have trespassed against us. And in Matthew's Gospel, earlier, chapter 7, verse 2, the measure you use to measure with will be measured back to you on the day of judgment. This Sunday, the question is quite simple. You know, who is it that you work for? Who do you belong to? Did you come to work for Christ to be a member of his body, or have you come to work for something else? Do you live in mercy and forgiveness, or in vengeance and wrath?